Today we're going to talk about the tariffs, but this will not be a political opinion video. I want to share the numbers behind manufacturing with solar equipment and battery cells. And I'm as pro-America as you can get, but I want to talk about the numbers. I'm not going to talk about the politicians or other industries, just about solar. So first off, China accounts for 80% of solar panel manufacturing. And when it comes to the silicon wafer, they make 97% of the global supply. When it comes to US manufacturing, it's only 2% of global supply. Next, when it comes to lithium iron phosphate batteries, China produces 98% of the global supply. But when it comes to lithium processing so that it's at a grade high enough so that you can use it for lithium ion battery manufacturing, they do 80% of the global supply. Next, when it comes to processing rare earth elements, China does 90% of the global supply. So China is completely dominating this space. Now when it comes to trade, what do we have to give China in return? First off, we have the largest consumer market. We spend the most amount of money per consumer and we have the reserve currency and they want that. But given those numbers I just rattled off, do you think we're in a position of power to do anything about it? Do you think anyone even cares about what our opinion is? You'll also notice that personal consumer debt levels are rising. Our deficit is rising. In February, our numbers were awful. A federal revenue, the deficit was the majority of funding. That's insane. And nobody wants to cut Social Security because they're like, oh, I paid into it. Well, it's going to be insolvent in a few years. No matter what your political opinions or leanings are, we are broke. China's economy is just as bad, but they're making stuff. And they're making a lot of stuff. Now, some arguments that people have stated as to why China makes so much stuff is because they don't have environmental protection regulations and they have slave labor. And one that I can actually prove is with the Uyghur Muslims. They have work camps. But with the solar industry, they're actually trying to automate everything. They don't want to spend money on labor anymore. They've actually automated lots of those steps just to make a lithium ion battery, for example. And a lot of how they make lithium iron phosphate batteries, they created on their own. America invented the lithium ion cell, but China actually created ways to manufacture at large volumes. Also, they've invented new ways to process rare earth elements and other elements at large volumes. And again, that doesn't require slave labor. That requires massive machines and lots of innovation. So there's lots of arguments, lots of questions on both sides, lots of opinions. But what I want to know is the effectiveness of these tariffs. Is America in a position to actually enact these tariffs for China to even care? Does China really need America's dollars? And considering how we've been using the dollar for the last few decades, do these other countries even want it as much anymore? Now, the big argument is that the playing field is not level. The other countries are imposing tariffs on us, but that's for a reason that we actually started in the first place. And America wants to reshore its manufacturing. But I think something we're missing is that we're not missing just the factory. We're missing the processing of the raw materials and the supply chains. Now, I think most people would agree that we don't want to be dependent on a single country for our stuff. And we want to make stuff everywhere. I understand that. Usually it fosters a stronger middle class. But my argument is that we are behind and we're broke. And China's broke as well, but we don't even make the stuff now. And I really question if we have the bargaining power with the dollar as a consumer market to negotiate this deal on our terms. I don't think we have it. So my opinion for the future and the effectiveness of the tariffs is I think people are just going to pay it because we don't make it. And the government is going to gobble up all that money and try to pay down the deficit. But if you actually look at the budget, it's still funded predominantly by debt. Last year, we paid over a trillion dollars on interest payments alone, and it's rising. With the new bonds that are issued, when no one wants to buy them, guess who buys them? The Fed does. It increases inflation over time, and you can't stop inflation, but you can slow it down by changing money velocity by hiring rates. But none of that is sustainable. We are becoming more and more broke, and guess what? These other countries are dominating when it comes to innovation. A lot of people are obsessed with saying that China copies us, and that is absolutely true some years ago. But now they are actually innovating. Just consider how big their population is and their average IQ. There's lots of stuff in China that I disagree about, especially being an American, 
but they're producing a lot and that's all that matters. In the last 19 centuries, 18 of those, China had the largest economy in the world. It's an ancient civilization. There's a reason they've lasted this long. And again, this is not political. It's just basic facts of history. And from a negotiating standpoint to make a deal, I don't think we have the power to do it. Also, America isn't what it was before. If we actually followed like the Monroe Doctrine, there would be no NATO. We also wouldn't be funding Israel. And we also wouldn't be bombing people in the Middle East to secure the petrodollar. We are an imperial state now. Large empires collapse from insolvency all the time historically. And when it comes to solar equipment and lithium batteries, I don't think much is going to change. I think we're just gonna pay the tariff. It's gonna go to the government. They're gonna pay down the debt a little bit. Now to reshore manufacturing, raw material processing and supply chains, it's not about building a factory. It's everything else that supports the factory. And not only do we have to create it, but we have to innovate at a faster pace than China and the other other countries. But will we actually catch up? I don't think so. I don't think so, man. We're a little behind. And by the time we catch up to China, they might be outpacing us even more. So I'm not trying to say it's good or bad or whatever. I'm just saying the facts. They are producing a lot of stuff and they're good at it. They're actually innovating. I think that these tariffs are a wake up call to other countries that they don't need us. And if you look at Americans, especially people my age, they care about social issues and identity politics, not raw material processing, unfortunately. Just look at how many useless college degrees we have available now. It's the majority of the degrees. Oh my god. And here's the numbers. In China, this is 2025, this article, they had 600,000 engineers, India had 350,000 engineers, and America had 70,000. And of all degrees issued in America, only 8% were engineering degrees, but in China it was 33%. One in three graduates in China is an engineer. And in China they have 23,000 engineering programs. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't care how pro-America you are, when you see those numbers, you have to think for a second. Now check this out. What does this look like to you? It looks like a Victron. But guess what? They're both made in Asia. So China makes the cheap stuff and the expensive stuff. A lot of people associate Victron with Europe because it's designed there and they have really good software. But it's still made in Asia, predominantly China, especially the components. You know what's crazy is you can see the circuit board, but this one's entirely potted. So what if the knockoff is actually better than this one? That would be hilarious. Now something that does make me mad is when American companies put the American flag all over Chinese products. For example, lithium batteries. 97% of lithium iron phosphate batteries are made in China. But look at how many outdoorsy lithium battery brands put American flags all over their product and their marketing material. And then they'll say it's designed, engineered, and supported by Americans and it's owned by veterans. But every single thing in that battery is made in China. And I question if it's actually engineered here in America because a lot of the ones that say that, when I open them up on my videos, every board and every cell is engineered in China. So maybe they engineered the box that it goes in but they're not engineering the whole thing. And a lot of these so-called patriots have trucks that are made overseas and they put an American flag on it. And it's like, what are you doing? A lot of people were against Japanese cars when they came here. They were doing the same thing that they're doing the Tesla to the Japanese cars. But guess what? Now you see Americans with their big tr Japanese trucks and then they have an American flag on it. And it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, where is your pride? Like, what are you actually standing for here? Now, the benefit of the tariff and cutting these programs is that we will not go insolvent as soon. We're on an unsustainable path and we have a massive deficit and I hope they can figure it out. But remember, the government is not responsible for our economy. What we, the people do is what actually matters most. No amount of government intervention can actually fix the people. Also, money cannot solve our issue. If we print up money to pay down the deficit, we're gonna have so much inflation we will collapse. What really matters is the culture of our people. And I think in some ways we're in decline.
Anyways, I don't have any good news for you. I don't have a good outlook. And I think a lot of Americans are overconfident about things. And I don't think they see the real big picture. And again, I'm pro-America. I want Americas to succeed forever. But unfortunately, our country is shifting and we are pretty broke. And that's pretty much it for this video. Please let me know what your thoughts are down below. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.